warrants, you know, it's, it's severe enough that they would get cited, whether it be running a stop sign or robbing somebody's house. That's all on the district justice websites. Now, I've only been able at a time to research about four months. Uh, if I get back longer, the numbers might change. But ironically, Schweinsville, with the least amount of population, like uh, 1,300 people, they have the most calls. Uh, Perkiomen Township, which is the largest population of 10,000 and some odd uh, residents, they have the second amount, with, or, like almost neck and neck with Schweinsville, with Lower Frederick being third and Upper Frederick, I think they only have five incidents in that whole amount of time. All of the felonies and misdemeanors are in Schweinsville and Perkiomen. So that study that was conducted by the D DCED, Mr. Er, Officer Kirshner, probably is not accurate if you're just going by population. And also the study says that the uh, tax revenue that will come from the residents is also based on the population. So if you're basing it on the amount of incidents as opposed to population, it seems with preliminary review that the town residents of Lower Frederick will be paying to patrol Schweinstein because that's how the officers were supposed to break down. You know, where the most population was, that's where the most officers are going to be. Well, so. I, would, I would encourage you, if you're interested in more details on the methodology, I can give you contact information for that office and they can explain to you. This is a well, methodology. Well, study. Uh, well, this is the methodology they've been using that works for them, and so I'm not prepared to. But in the 48 page it. report that I have read, um, all of the studies that they were referring to were really outdated. Uh, Ones from 1989, another one was from 19, uh, 1996. The same study was updated, and then the, the <coughs> most recent one was 2007. This is all this information is based on decade-old information. Well, again, if there's a methodology they used to do this. It works. It's very effective. It's only for population. I don't know. Okay. okay. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll give you contact information. It's better to go it's to all, that all 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 to go to that office and discuss with them and see if they have any more ideas. I, I cannot. Nothing's happening right now. No, I understand so, that. But, no, let's, let's but I, before the board of supervisors would well, make any firm decision, I hope to gather this information together, create a spreadsheet for you so you get the graphs and you can see the comparison that the more incidents happen in other locations as opposed to here. So the way that the tax structure based on the study uh, is broken down would uh, lower credit would be unfairly taxed is what the gist of it is. Well, like I said, uh, just yeah, I know, I know it's just a survey. But I just wanted to get that out Sorry. there so that folks realize that. Thank you. Warren. Well, I have to say, I agree with Marla that the oh, no, sorry. My name is Warren Jacobs from Puma Road. I agree with Marla that it seemed during I was at the presentation and that the methodology that they used was definitely what best served their purpose. Um, it's the whole thing, the whole presentation to me seemed more like an infomercial than an informational. I mean, it's just a, everything that they did, every kind of statistic they pulled out seemed like it was used as a purpose of a selling point to, to push this idea. That's my personal opinion. Okay, like we said again, we're not, this is just a survey right now. Nobody's doing nothing. Okay? Fine, I'm not saying it. I think that they used a lot of information to serve their purpose. Okay. I, I'd like to see further study. Maybe outside the people who did that. Right. Yes. Ron Garrett, uh, Sorry, sorry. Oh, oh. I can't hear you. Sorry. Ron Garrett, Sigurdsson Road. I guess, of course, another guy, maybe a dumb one. Is why are we not hiring more policemen for our, for Sigurdsson, for Swainsco? Why are we relying on regional and state police? I can answer that. If we had a full-time police force, your taxes would double. That's why. You know what? But 
that they're working for us, and so we should pay them. That's why that I don't care if my taxes are raised. Okay, well, We're looking for protection. I mean, that's an option if you're a small long community. Long, I, I have no problem paying higher taxes for things like this that benefit us at all. Take that into consideration. Thank you. Let's move forward. Old business. <laughs> Taxpayers pay for the equipment, the trucks, 
once you start giving them an inch, then they want, well, why can't we use the equipment? It just gets carried away. So that's not covered in the lawsuit. We have two lawyers at the table. Um, we currently have three organizations using the building and following the program that we should be then not allowed to use it and have the policy and nobody can use the building. For me first, and then I'll jump in. Uh, you can jump in right now. I would suggest if, if you have groups using the building now, then that's your policy. You're allowing the use of it for what those groups. Something happens, what something happens, should we not have something for that? I always recommend that you get some sort of waiver and that the group who uses something that they provide insurance and name you on the insurance certificate. And that's what this building the application is. Uh, so the application is sort of separate from the policy. You may wish to consider it separately. Uh, Yes. 
So does somebody want to make a motion then to require those groups that have used the building to provide adequate insurance to be determined by the township manager and solicitor going forward? I'm going to make that motion. I'll second. Any questions? Question, well, Attorney Schmidt, Silver, uh, Road Drive. Uh, the question would be then, if they have to complete an application, when the application would go for release of identification to hold the township farms and provide insurance? It, it, is that what I'm understanding is being taken up? So presently, the motion, as I understand it, is simply to require these groups to provide insurance. But since you made the motion, uh, you yeah, can amend I'm that motion. specifically talking about the indemnification and waiver for these three existing groups. And I think we break out and split this out in this conversation into and focus on those three. Uh, again, if I'm correct, <coughs> your indemnification waiver includes a building use application. Is that correct? Could be. So you, you may want an application that Tom's prepared together with insurance behind that application. And that application including an indemnification <coughs>
paper, but we don't have insurance policy that we can pursue. And the way they can get insurance, I mean, they could well be. Now, another aspect of this is presumably the township has insurance on its building. So this is simply, and it happens all the time, uh, moving the risk over to the users. What does insurance cost? Mm, don't know. Don't know and answer the question. What product of their use and do they have some insurance now? It's simply an umbrella to cover this type of usage. So it's an unknown. Chairman Schmidt, Silver Grove Drive. <coughs> I've, I've gone to the women's Center Club of Chinesville, and we do have liability insurance. And it does cover any activities that we have, and that runs between 150 and 175 per year. And we've had that, you know, it's an ongoing policy that we have. And I think usually even, even the, the women that come in here and exercise that, they must have an insurance policy. Yeah. Because if one twists an ankle, yeah. There's got to be a coverage for it. It's got to be. Ms. Jansen, Simmons Road. Stand up. J A N S S O N. Terry, I think you know, we're working on that business. Uh, on times when we work on projects, especially for a municipality, you have to submit an uh, insurance certificate. Uh, maybe as additionally insured. I think perhaps that would be would suffice what would be needed, you know, just as, as Joe said, you know, you would have it, and you wouldn't have to take out additional insurance. You just call up your insurance agent and say, can you issue an insurance, sir, naming Low Frederick Township as being additionally insured. That's a right. And, that's, and I think that's what I would have to do. Thank you. 